Hello everybody, in this video I'll be painting up the Gloomtide shipwreck. Uh, to start off with, I was actually pleasantly surprised by the size of this kit. Um, as you're going to see in the video, I left it in two parts for ease of painting. I would strongly recommend doing that. Uh, certain parts will be really hard to reach if you don't. As usual, I started off with a base coat of Chaos Black to a rattle can. And then through an airbrush I apply the coat of sand brown to the entire model. Um, you don't need to do this with an airbrush, you can just do this with a regular paintbrush and paint it on. Once that's dry, I use soft dough and wash basically the entire model with it. Um, I did this on the, on the wood parts to get our first initial shading in and tone the entire model a bit darker, as you can see here. Once that was dry, uh, through an airbrush I applied a coat of gloss varnish to the entire model. Uh, in this manner you change the surface tension of the model. And if you then apply a new wash, this new wash will be more eager to go and sit in the more deeper recesses. I used uh, Agrox Earthshade for a next wash on the wooden parts. Again, you can use a spray can for the gloss varnish or you can just paint it on by brush if you want. Once the Agrox Earthshade was, wash was dry, I took Arabic Shadow and I dry brushed the entire model with it. After that I took beige and I dry brushed the model again. It is okay uh, in this stage to leave certain parts untouched and just go a bit rough over the model. You will get a nice uh, color differentiation over the entire model with some darker and some lighter parts. I then used an acrylic paint, Van Dyke Brown, and I thinned that down with a little bit of water and a lot of glaze medium. I lost the footage, but I just washed the entire model with it. Um, as I, I never used this before, um, I'm not going to use it again as well. Um, I might just have as well use a color like Chart Brown from the model color range. And thin that down to a wash. Then I took hammered copper. And I, and I started blocking in all the copper slash golden parts. Then using knee lock oxide, I gave the copper parts a, a rough wash. Just covered them completely in it. Once that was dry, I washed a Coelia green shade in the more deeper recesses on the copper parts. Whilst the green shade was drying, I took Beastie Brown and I blocked in all the sand I put on the model. So you can see I put a lot of sand in the, on the bottom as well. There was a lot of yeah, crap lying there and I don't really like it on my scenery. My scenery needs to, be, uh, needs to be doing its job and not distracting from models. Uh, it's just complimentary to me. So I took khaki and I painted all the ropes on the model. Also I painted these, uh, what are they called? Barnacles I think with khaki. 
correct me if, if they're not uh, called barnacles. I'm not sure about the English word for them. Then I used the khaki uh, to dry brush all the sand on the base. Then taking beige again, I dry brushed all the sand again. Just making it a bit, little bit lighter and um, making it end up the same color as the Namardi trowel I painted in uh, the previous tutorial. I then took cold grey and I painted all the rocks. Then I took Antonian camo shade and I washed the ropes and the barnacles with um, the camo shade. Um, I deliberately chose a different color than the Quidia green shade for this one to make a little bit of a um, a different appearance otherwise it would be way too many green bluish uh, washes and now there's some nice green washes in there as well then I took the Quidia green shade again and I washed the rocks and the surrounding area for the rocks you can also just apply little dabs of uh, green washes to the to the wood to give a more uh, worn down effect to them Next, uh, back to the copper parts. I made a mixture of uh, three parts hammered copper with one part glorious gold. And I applied a really rough highlight to all these copper parts. Um, making sure, uh, keeping those washes uh, visible in the deepest recesses, obviously. And also on the higher surfaces, as you can see here. Um, we did apply them to give a worn down look to the copper. So we want them to be clearly showing. I then added two parts polished gold to the previous mixture and I applied a uh, highlight all over the copper parts. Again, following the same uh, manner of thought, just putting it on there, uh, not paying too much attention how neat it is. It needs to be more effective in, in, uh, in case of scenery. Basically, for a uh, a model I always apply the rules. I keep it at arm's length and see if I like it at that range. And as part of uh, as far as a piece of scenery goes, I put it on the table, take like step like two, three meters back, and if I like it then then I'm okay with it. So you can be a lot um, less precise on scenery. Uh, then I took silver and I applied a couple of thin edge highlights to all the copper parts. This is just to enhance a little bit of effect to the, to the copper, make it a bit more popping and distinct, distinguishing from the from the wooden parts. I then took wolf grey, and I forgot to turn the camera on, so I didn't begin. I just dry brushed rocks and a little bit in the area surrounding them so that they uh, they now look more like rocks. Then I took bone white and I highlighted all these particles just by following that line. Use what you what you have in this case and simply just basically placing a cross on the top of the particles and then it looks like this when that's done
Then using Kaki, I apply a highlight to all the ropes. Just simply uh, hitting the higher, uh, most upper areas. A little bit with some paint, just to make them stand out a bit more. There was this uh, crossbow lying in the, in the boat and uh, I decided to uh, keep it a bit in line with the troll I painted last week. So I painted the whole thing black and the bones lying next to it uh, I painted earth. I then made a mixture of one part black and one part anthracite brown to grey, so not brown to grey. And I applied the highlights to the black areas on the crossbow. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but uh, it's there. And that is then followed by a highlight of pure anthracite grey. I then used Agrox Earthshade and washed the bone parts that were lying there. Once that's dry, I use Kaki and apply a, a highlights to all the bone parts. And I finished those uh, bones off with a pure highlight of pure bone white. You can, if you want to, build this up into uh, thin coats by making the second highlight a little bit smaller than the first one. Then I went on to those uh, faces that are lying there. Um, I painted them in a mixture of one part shadow grey and three parts jade green. And then I use dark tone to wash it. And this gets the first basic shading nicely in place. Um, with stuff like this, it's not that bad. If you go a little bit outside, you get the extra shading on the on the bottom towards the wooden parts. Then I took Quidia green shade and I washed them again. Uh, this is obviously when the uh, dark tone was dry. Next I made a mixture of one part shadow grey, uh, three parts jade green and two parts stonewall grey and I apply the highlights to the faces. And on these things particularly you can see that um, I'm, uh, I'm not as neat as I normally paint. But again this needs to be effective on the table and not distracting on the table. So I added two parts dead white to that mixture and I applied uh, the next highlight. Um, I do what I usually do by dragging the paint towards the edges, usually going in two or if needed three or even four coats uh, over each over every area, just until I'm happy with how it looks. Next onto the metal parts, I started off with just blocking all the parts in with good metal, all the parts, there weren't that many. Just give them a good coat and uh, add that color on there. I prefer to use airbrush paint for 
because they are already pre-tinned and you can quite easily work with them, they have a nice flow to them. Once this is dry, I took non-oil and I washed all the metal parts. Just to darken it up a bit. And once that's dry, I apply a coat of Agrox Earthshade on top of that to make it now look nice and dirty. This is then followed by a dry brush of gunmetal. If you've watched uh, more previous tutorials, you can also clearly see me using uh, completely different techniques that I normally hardly use. I far more dry brushing and washing on scenery pieces than I do on uh, actual models, uh, play models, this is a model as well obviously, but um, miniatures, the figures. I then took um, AK Interactive Rust Weeks and I painted in little dots of this uh, nice dark rust color on all the metallic parts, I'm sorry. And once that's, once that's dry, I took a light rust wash, also from AK Interactive, and I applied a little bit of this as well. I'm going to issue a warning with this specific uh, color. Be really careful. If you overdo this, everything will turn orange. So be really careful with it. Uh, or thin it down a lot with uh, thinner, uh, white spirit. So you can apply it as a as a wash, but then again, it it turns orange really quickly. You can see that here uh, that there's some fairly bright orange spots on the light. So I took black and I painted uh, the windows in the in the light, the glass paint. And then only the stupid fish were left. Blue. I blocked them in with abyssal blue. I'm not a big fan of these fish sitting on this uh, on this piece of terrain. It actually makes the piece of terrain yeah less useful. Um, I play, for example, a game between Stormcast Eternals and Corn Bloodbound. Yeah, these fish don't have anything to do on the on the terrain pieces. They only really work with the Ardenet Deep Kin. So I made a mixture of um, one part abyssal blue and two parts royal purple and I applied this as a highlight over the base color of uh, pure abyssal blue. Next I added two parts pale flesh to this picture and I applied the next highlight building the color up outwards and towards the areas where the light would fall. Um, especially on the inside of the ship, these things were pretty hard to reach and paint uh, decently. And I just chose a, a color that would make them clearly visible. So next I added two more parts of Pill flesh, and I started reinforcing the highlights again uh, using thinner lines and spreading the paint out a bit. I then added four parts white to the mixture. And I again reinforced all previous highlights, uh, leaving previous layers visible, obviously, just building up that color. 
and as far as the bodies of the fish go, they are done now. <laughs> I took a little bit of ghost gray and a little bit of the paint I used for the for the last highlight in roughly equal amounts, and I mix those together and I apply a final highlight on the fins of the fish and the tails just to make a little bit of a difference between the body and uh, those parts once that's done I took black and I just painted the eyes black so that they stand out as well once that's dry, that all was dry um, I varnished the model with a tall coat and once that one was dry I used a little bit of gloss varnish to paint in the glass paints on the on the light and the eyes on the fish and that finishes up this model so all in all I had um, a lot of fun painting this one um, like I said in the beginning I was pleasantly surprised by the size of it and I think it can really add to a battlefield feeling, especially when you're playing with the uh, Ignat Deepkin. Due to the fish, I don't think it will really work if you uh, play with other armies. Unless it's against Ignat Deepkin. So I hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching. Like and share. Subscribe. Leave a comment if you want to. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Bye bye, guys.